Will you love me? Love me when they telling all them lies on me. Lies on me. You told me you would ride for me. Ride for me. Hold the tears. Don't you cry for me. Cry for me. Don't you cry. So today's video, how you guys doing out there? Welcome to the Disney Channel. Like, subscribe, comment, get involved. Want to thank all my returning subscribers. We're up to 30 subscribers now. Um, it has definitely been a journey. Uh, this is probably my seventh YouTube channel. Maybe 10. I've definitely been consistent, but uh, I think I do more watching YouTube and consuming content than creating content. So bear with me as I try to transition into the creator side a little bit more and get more content out to you guys. Um, and a time to build up. Tripod microphone boomstone. Who makes this? Let's read their mission statement. It says, Our philosophy, dedicated to the manufacturer and premium stands for the professional audio. Whoops. Dedicated to the manufacturing. Dedicated to manufacturing premium stands for the professional studio musician. DR Pro is your assurance of superior performance and value. Built to surpass industry standards, our support gear is strong, lightweight, and uses durable power coated finish. Uses a durable power coated finish. Tougher tubing and precision mechanical parts that are cut above the competition. Plus our industry standards give plus our industry standards designs makes it easy to integrate our products into any studio or stage environment. So this is my mic stand. It's pretty good. Um, it's not the first one I've owned. Uh, I've actually, must say, I do like this one. Um, it's a little bit under 100 bucks. The last one I purchased, the first one I purchased before I upgraded to this one was about like 35 to 40 dollars. And it just had, um, it had less than ideal parts. So some of the plastics and the little tubing and like how this said, they make this with uh, tougher tubing for sure. Uh, you get what you pay for. When I first started recording music, I was really not making money from my music. I was kind of funding it myself and I had worked a job and saved some money up to invest into studio equipment. So I was pinching pennies at that time. And like I said, the first mic stand I bought was like 40 hours. It probably lasted me like a week. Um, from moving it around, putting the mic up, down, just like wear and tear, just from personal use. Uh, it just really didn't last. So, uh, if you're someone out there and you're looking into, well, what would I say? So when I started my studio, it was about having creative control. Uh, I know we, I'm an independent artist, uh, independent artist, independent label, and creative control. Creative control is still one of the greatest assets and pros to being independent. Uh, being able to create at your own pace, being able to put the content out that you want to put out to the world uh, on your own time and within your own space in life, pretty much. Um, is why I enjoy being independent. Now, there is some downfalls to it, like pitfalls that come with being independent. Things like perching a mic stand 
that I'm not going to say it was a waste of money, but in all actuality, it was a loss. I made an investment. Disney don't fall in love. And it wasn't a good investment. Um, it did last for some time. I should have recorded, should have been, I should have went to school for accounting. So I could have at least determined how many songs I recorded when I was using that other mic stand. Then set a hourly rate or cost per song to record that music and at least you know, for my balance sheet, for balance sheet purposes, for tax purposes, have figured out that valuable content, of course, that, that's probably been my, my greatest struggle is feeling confident that the value that I want to provide is being delivered. I learn a lot from YouTube personally. Um, I fix cars watching YouTube. I've improved my business watching YouTube. I've helped other people from watching YouTube. So overall, I'm a YouTube fan, um, and I've learned so much that I do want to take my time to give back. It takes a little portion of my day. Right now, it's probably about 7 in the morning. Um, just got up, got dressed, had breakfast, and I just wanted to go through some of these old boxes. Um, cause I, I, I don't know why I keep and collect the boxes, but just in case I have to move or anything, I can take my property, put it back in here, and transport it safely from one location to the next. So, um, in no way is this a sponsor video, uh, at all, but DR Pro, I got this from Guitar Center, um, this is good, wouldn't say don't get another brand, uh, I would say uh, this was close to a hundred bucks, and based on that, the quality is decent, it's simply a mic stand like literally a hundred bucks for a couple pieces of metal and rubber it's the hardware that I think I really end up paying for these nuts and bolts these little metal pieces things that could be plastic that are metal it's probably why the price difference from the other one which is about forty dollars um, so, DR Pro gets you a good mic stand, especially if you're gonna invest into a microphone. You know, microphones can range from anywhere from $100 to $1,000. So, if you're gonna invest into a microphone, you at least want a sturdy platform to put it on. You don't want this thing falling over and doing things that it shouldn't do and, you know, messing up the components that could possibly be in your microphone and that can, you know, change the sound of your music forever. Hey, who knows? You might like the sound of a distorted mic. It's art. Do you. Next, we have my favorite. So, at my old studio, we had HS7. A little bit, a little bit bigger. Or oh, no, I think we had eights, HS eights. A um, little bit bigger, a uh, louder sound. Um, a lot came with the HS eights. There's bigger and more expensive uh, for this studio space. Um, I went with the HS fives for one with the threes or three point fives, whatever comes smaller than this. You're really not going to get a lot of bass. Um, and that low wind is kind of important with the kind of music I make. So these actually do provide a little bit better low weight, low, low end bass um, frequencies. And as well, really flat when it comes to listening. It's like really true to sound. Uh, I find myself sometimes having to tweak the mixing from here. Like when I listen to it. Well, first, I mix it from my headphones. After I mix it from my headphones, I mix it for the speakers. After the speakers, then I mix it for the car. And then after the car, I mix it for the cell phone. So, about four different mixes and get a blend and balance of the four that kind of fits them all um, before I go off and, you know, then get it mastered and mixed professionally. Uh, 
I, I get, I get my, I like my sound. I get it pretty true to where I want it to be. Um, usually I'm paying anywhere between fifty to a hundred dollars to get a song mastered. Uh, I don't send every song to get mastered. It's more or less the ones that I'm gonna use for music videos. If I'm gonna shoot a music video, then I probably will get the song mastered because I'll be using the audio and other. You guys know what I mean. Yamaha HS5s. Uh, these were running about 200 each plus tax. Um, like I said, I had the eights before. Very bulky, uh, very big. Uh, I, besides that, I don't really, there's not really much of a difference for me. Um, like I said, I'm mixing every song four times and that alone, just the time that it takes to do that, the the effort that I'm putting into those different mixes gets me a pretty clean mix where I probably could make it with just headphones. Um, me using these Yamaha HS5s, besides for aesthetic, um, I really couldn't tell you. They, they're, they're good speakers highly overpriced um and i'm let me let me let me correct myself they're not speakers these are monitors so for professional studio or home studio equipment uh if you're looking for monitors these are good monitors uh there's all kinds of different monitors like i said with the smaller sizes like the threes or maybe like fours like four inch subwoofers like you're really not gonna get a good low-end bass depending on the kind of music you're making that's not going to be efficient you really want to be able to get them low-end frequencies to come through clear on your monitor so that when you're mixing and before you're putting your music out to the world it sounds good so that when it's played on someone else you send it to someone's email and they open it in their car from their android phone or play it on you know for the party or something it sounds decent you know Without labels and having it to industry standard, it could be a very expensive business. So instead of needing to always go out and pay someone else to perfect your sound and like get that ear that you kind of need, um, me personally, I, I use my audience for that. Uh, I've built a decent sized audience with the music that I've been creating. Well, I make billboards one day if I don't I definitely accomplish my goals um, with the music business and then it's just keep on spreading the music because I do believe that music is healing and, and music is power so for me personally it's therapy uh, and that's why I want to be able to give more out to YouTube because there's been times where I've been down and on myself and music has been the only answer um, or watching a YouTube video about making music, you know, about someone else who's had a recording studio or who started a music business or who struggled in the music business. Uh, it's just a lot of things coming together that we got going on here. So we gotta wrap this up. We got Yamaha 8, we got HS5s. <sighs> Microphone. Reflection filter, that's what this is. Um, again, this is one of those aesthetic things. Uh, I've mixed plenty of music without having used the reflective filter or without being in a completely treated room. Truth be told, it's aesthetic. Um, it brings that studio feel, that st studio vibe into my environment so it, it helps me feel more confident about what i'm doing it helps me connect to the music more so when i'm that connected to the music and that connected to what i'm doing and into, into the industry i produce better music i produce better content so and being connected in that way 
aesthetic matters. Uh, make sure you're always paying attention to the little things. Uh, this details can't be mimicked or details can't be taught. You know, everyone, the best way I can describe aesthetic in a business and how I want to describe it would be almost like an integrity to the craft. Like, shit has to make sense. Like, there's no point in you fucking doing anything without it making sense. And that's not necessarily money in, in all regards, but we you know that the, the systems, the powers that be, do exist for particular reasons. And, and in those reasons, things gotta make sense. So, it's like, $100 for this piece, $300 for that piece, $100 for that piece, $150 for that piece, the program's $300, like, these, these different things that it, that these different tools to bring them together, and they're like, so, it's like being like a MacGyver, um, and then, you know, there's YouTube to, to share it with the world, so, even if I created some music today and I wasn't 100% satisfied with the, the quality that I reached or wasn't 100% behind it or, or had a fan or had a supporter, um, still confident enough to put it out there and, and, and let it inspire. Um, and, that, and that's really what it's all about, is inspiration, inspiring myself and inspiring others. Uh, some people, it's hard to get up. You know, mental health awareness is very big and is... Is, is real so you know just on my job drops 821 uh let me tell you guys about that 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 song um so that song was produced by Young Lenny Productions. If you guys seen that last video that I uh, put up about the producer who stole my masters, um, you know, it's, it's just an experience that I went through. I've, I've, I've got over it. Uh, he also produced this song as well. Uh, I during that time I was a little bit conflicted, and I still, you know, I'm still talking about it. So dude, I still have an, uh, a connection to it. Um, but during that time that we were working, we produced together, you know, numerous songs um, that I'm connected to that, that I actually put the same quality that I put in all, all of my music. I, I met those tracks with the same quality. So because of that, um, I'm gonna move forward in that process and move towards rectifying the communication and situation between me and said producer and said time hopefully without anything that have to go through any court process or anything like that um if it comes to that and that's what it takes for us to need mediate the situation then you know we'll get our attorneys attorneys get our get our attorneys involved and take care of things that way um for now, I do not believe that that is the way to go. Um, like I said, uh, being an independent artist and label, these is kind of the times where this power is being able to be exercised. It's like, what choice am I going to make? Why? And when I stand on it, what is going to be the consequences or adverse consequences for those decisions? So music like this, um, I feel like it's, for, it's to push the culture forward. Like I said, um, it was produced by an engineer and by a producer who I leased the beat from, uh, recorded at their studio, um, and I was sent the master recording when it, when, when it was over. On this song, smooth transition, all the contracts, all the paperwork, everything was fine. Uh, it was another song where we ran into some hiccups, but this one's coming out 8-1. 21. I'm really not going to be putting too much promotion behind it. It's more or less just releasing it, letting my, my audience know what's coming out. Um, it's great music. Um, I wrote this song about 90 days ago. Uh, so, as you can see, 
releasing like on a 90 to 120 day turnaround time um will not be making a video for this maybe like a trailer or you know a small youtube video but like as far as hiring a production team and writing about the video treatment um getting you know numerous cameramen and cinematographers to come out and shoot a video for this we will not be participating in that and that's mainly because of the the things that transpired in the recording process um it's just not a smooth bet for me um it's just it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't like the seeds weren't planted on the ground and I would have wanted them planted on. Very, 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 very authentic music to me, to who I am, to my core, to when it was created. But when this was created versus the time and the space that I'm in now, um, this music has changed me. So I could go back and, you know, create a video and visual for it to, you know, I hope that this music is able to offer what it offered to me to the world and in in a positive in a positive light because this music has definitely had its toll on me in a in a negative sense and i can say negative but i learned from it you know this music that i created i was i was able to learn from and the only way that i was put in a position to learn was by making a mistake should i give you guys a snippet i mean it comes out tomorrow Yeah, I think I will.